Okay, so I want to briefly touch on Evo Japan's 2019 Dead or Alive 6 presentation. But to get there, we need to lay down a little bit of groundwork. That groundwork being that the Dead or Alive franchise has this really weird history of declaring that they're going to tone down the sexiness this time. You know, you know, get serious and really focus on the more important things. But, but then at the last minute, just kind of going... Actually... Dead or Alive 5 was a game built from the ground up with a brand new engine, and Team Ninja declared early that it was a good time to re-examine the franchise and maybe take it in a new direction. They wanted to tone down the sexiness that had been a staple of Dead or Alive for well over a decade. You know, try and scrape off some of that thin, sticky film that's acted as a barrier for a lot of gamers. Dead or Alive 5 producer Yosuke Hayashi we're trying to focus on the real women that surround us. The voice of a female. The mannerisms. We are being realistic about it. We want to show something that's more high class, that adult males of our generation could look at a woman character and be impressed with her as a woman, not just as a pinup. Combined with guest characters from Virtua Fighter and their I'm a Fighter marketing campaign, yeah, it, it looked like Dead or Alive 5 was on the right track to- All the team wanted to do was create the cutest chicks in video games. And bikini pre-order bonus costumes! And while Dead or Alive 5 is still a pretty solid entry in the franchise, it's it's mostly just known for its exhaustive list of fan service DLC costumes. And, and I cannot undersell my use of the word exhaustive. Just, j just look at all that. That, that's like a thousand bucks of DLC right there. Friggin' Christ, I, I, I cannot believe we're still scrolling. This... Th this is ridiculous. Uh, okay, but, but like seriously, can we... No, really, can we, can we just stop? I think they get the point. Cut to late 2018. The development of Dead or Alive 6 and we're right back where we were. Brand new engine, Team Ninja wants to be taken more seriously, toning down the sexiness. This time the aim was to be more accessible and compatible with esports. Got, gotta get that esports money! But like, ESPN doesn't even want to fuck with Armika's default costume. Like, another sexy Dead or Alive game wouldn't even stand a chance! A and you know what? Early reveals of the game look promising, at least. Maybe? For, for a little bit. And then there was a preview event held in late January of 2019 that just kind of had everybody looking at each other going, They said they were going to tone down the fan service, right? I thought they said they were going to tone down the fan service. This doesn't look like they toned down the fan service at all. And that sets the stage for February 2019, Evo Japan. The Dead or Alive 6 presentation begins with introductions. First on stage is Yuka Kurumochi, gravure model. You might actually recognize her and her husband from a meme. Yeah, yeah, that one. That, that's professional Street Fighter player and Rainbow Mika main, Fudo, yucking it up in the background. Next out, Saki Yoshida, also a gravure model. And then out comes this guy. I mean, honestly, I don't, even, I don't even need to go over the rest of the presentation anymore, do I? That, that pretty much just set the tone for the next half an hour. Okay, yeah, sure, fine. I, I guess we'll mercenary on. That gentleman is Yohei Shimburi, producer and director of Dead or Alive 6. This is the guy that runs the show. Right off the bat, you can see that Yuka and Saki have a natural presence on stage there. They're just a blast to watch. The two of them look like they're having so much fun. They're there to hype this game, and friggin' Christ, they've got their working boots on. Yohei gets into game, showing off the boob bounce of Kasumi's idol animation, which invites Saki to demonstrate the equivalent of that in real life. <laughs> they show off a free camera mode, pausing the action to mostly just look at boobs and butts. You know, like you do. Then they get to the part where they pose Bass powerbombing the Tengu girl, and then move the camera to make it look like... 
You know, and everyone friggin' loses their shit. A few minutes later, the presentation is abruptly taken off stream. Mr. Wizard issuing a statement saying, The DOA ad that aired on our stream does not reflect the core values of EVO or the FGC. We ended the stream temporarily to protect the integrity of the brand. We sincerely apologize to our fans. And if I'm remembering correctly, they like cut to some commercials of like friggin' Mortal Kombat fatalities or some shit. But yeah, sure. Core values. Criticisms were cast. Memes were made core values and ever-present part of the FGC from now until forever. As for Dead or Alive 6, it came out, and, and that's really all anyone can say about it. It sure came out. It, it is a video game. It is a video game that was released, and you can purchase it and play it. See? Like, you're looking at clips of me playing it right now. It's a dead or alive game. But seriously, I, I did want to take a second and praise Yuka and Saki again for being part of that EVO presentation. And I, I wanted to use this video as a bit of an, an introduction, a, a springboard, if you will, or, or really just, just an excuse, whatever. They're, they're both gravure models. And, you know... I've reviewed a few gravure productions on this channel, and 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 they they have gravure DVDs. Do you do? You see see where this is go? Yeah, I'm gonna review each of their DVDs. Get hype! Coming soon to the channel: reviews of Dochini Suruno, starring Saki Yoshida, and Momojiri Zanmai, starring Yuka Kurimochi. We await your return, warrior.